Hi YouTube uh, watchers, I wanted to give you a little insight into uh, the use of coal stoves. Uh, as you can see behind me, I've got my coal stove going and it's a heat like you wouldn't believe. But I'm going to give you a little bit of history in, in how coal got started, how it got used, how it basically has now worked its way out of society. Um, coal is considered a fossil fuel because it's a fossilization of plant matter and, well, they say animal matter too, but coal is basically just plant matter. Um, its fossilized remains of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. And it didn't really come into prominence until about the Industrial Revolution time. I mean, for heating homes, for powering vehicles, trains, things of that nature. Um, how was coal formed? Well, coal was actually formed 66 to 250 some million years ago uh, by this plant form, mostly from peat bogs and uh, vegetation per se, and then it was pressurized as it made its way down through the soil and had a specific weight on top, it was pressurized and eventually turned into the black rock that we see today. Uh, most houses burn coal from the 1800s uh, all the way up into 1940-1950 until it kind of unpopular uh, because of its, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for a later video and why it became unpopular. Um, there's uh, several different types of uh, coal. Um, uh, the There's lignite, which is the dirtiest type of coal, but kind of known as brown coal. Um, lignite, and then the next most refined type of coal is subbituminous, and then bituminous coal. And then the top of the food chain there, so to speak, is anthracite, which is the hardest and the least dirty of all the coals. Now, lignite subbituminous and bituminous coal are all used in coal power plants. So, you can take that for what it means. Uh, the largest producers of coal in the world are China, India, I think the um, United States is way down that chain. It's like third or fourth producer in the world. So, um, now there's several different sizes of coal. Um, there's barley, which is basically a, 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 the size of very coarse sand. Then there's rice coal, then there's buck coal, then there's pea coal, and it gradually gets in larger in its size. Um, after pea coal is nut coal, which is basically what I burn. Um, then there's stove coal, and then there's egg coal. So if you look at it for size-wise, um, the barley, like I said, was the size of coarse sand, and the egg coal is the size of a softball, so they're fairly large pieces. It depends on what kind of stove you have as to what kind of coal you need to burn. And there's recommendations in all these stoves and what they say sh that they should burn. Usually the auto feeders, the, one that, the ones that run by auger control, uh, somewhat similar to a pellet stove, use the smaller coal sizes, the barley through uh, the buck size. Buck or buckwheat, whatever you want to call it. Um, now I would say before you buy a coal stove and there's pros and cons of coal and 
wood stoves and cob stoves and all this kind of stuff. We're not going to get into that tonight, but um, I just wanted to say that before you buy a stove, you should really find a source for coal first. And the reason I say that is there's a very narrow band of states, and they're mostly on the East Coast, um, that mine coal, especially anthracite, which is basically what you want to burn. So you're kind of stuck between Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Um, that's pretty much the narrow band of anthracite coal producers. Now, I'm in Maryland, so I'm just over the border of Pennsylvania into Maryland, and to be honest with you, it's pretty hard to find coal suppliers. And um, my, my last coal supplier dried up, so now I'm stuck with one, and the price of it is absolutely crazy. I started burning coal 29 years ago, and when I st first started uh, burning coal, um, it was $75 a ton. Now the price here with the latest uh, Go Brandon regime um, has increased to $265 a ton. Now coal does produce the most amount of BTUs. Uh, per size, um, aka ton, I, and it's hard to judge between a gallon of oil and a ton of coal, but coal does produce the most amount of heat per size of any other uh, fossil fuel. So, um, Other things that you have to consider with coal is where are you going to store the coal? Uh, it's best to have an enclosed area or covered area in which to have it because hey, if snow and ice gets on it, it can be a real pain to try to break it up because the, the, uh, the rock kind of freezes together. Another consideration is what do you do with the ash? Fly ash has been considered as um, a carcinogen. So you have to have a way to dispose of the ash, and you have to have a place to store the coal. Two big things that you have to consider. Um, we're going to get into um, other things about coal stoves and what to consider, the pros and cons, how to burn coal in later videos. But just wanted to get you up to date in the beginning here and tell you what coal was all about. Um, back when I was a child, just about every house was still burning coal. Uh, in fact, the house that I live in now had a coal burning furnace in the basement and it was fed by uh, we had a basement window, and that's where the coal chute went in and got thrown on the floor and shoveled into the stove, uh, into the uh, furnace to create the heat. Um, later, it was converted into an oil burning unit, which a lot of houses, you know, had done. They put a Beckett burner on the door of the, of the old coal stoves, and that's the way they worked for a long time. But just thought I'd update you. Um, I hope you learned something, and if you did, uh, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll give you some more updates about the coal stove in the future. Thanks for watching.